Welcome back to the lab. Forget almost everything I showed you in the previous video for the low cost 7 RE, the brakes, because I changed just about everything. Not, not, not as bad as that, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff has changed. Uh, for the better, some good improvements with basically negligible costs and a lot better product for the customer. There's also been some paint gone on things and some shiny, aesthetically pleasing stuff and things. Jewelry, let's call it jewelry. I got our mates at Chartwell Panel and Paint in Frankton, ironically. We're in Chartwell, but they're in Frankton. They're called Chartwell. Anyway, got them to paint our nose cone and our, um, oops, I showed you already, our rear guards. That's carefully sat over there, ready to go to get some stuff and things. Uh, I could have painted these myself, but everything in here will get covered in black overspray, so no thanks, we'll get someone else to do that. We got uh, Jonathan Rosser to draw that, well I drew it up on paper, he drew it up in CAD, and then we got it laser cut, and the first version of it didn't really work out, so we got the, the drawing tweaked, and um, laser cut again, so now he's got one to hang on his wall, that's a relatively cheap piece to cut out so it's not a big deal and um, this one now fits bang on that's good so that's um, four millimeter thick aluminium it's basically copying a design that other people have done for other Lotus 7s and things like that Chatham 7s etc except this one was custom designed to fit specifically in that nose cone I'm not sure if there was one available anywhere at one point in time or not it wasn't worth the time to go chasing it, it was easier just to draw it up and do that. Um, that came about, I raised the thing with the customer as to whether we wanted to do something nice with a heat shield on here, and he said, oh yeah, I wanted to do the grill, so so there you go, we got these two done. Uh, I drew that up on the whiteboard and Jonathan drew it up into CAD, and then um, we got that laser cut. So that's stainless steel, and then that's been rolled, and then we had... Before this went on there, there was, there's been numerous comments about the hot dog style muffler which come from the factory, um, a very bright orange you will see in previous video, brighter than this and um, yeah the old internet people were commenting on it, I got a bit tired of seeing it so of course I was never going to leave it bright orange, that's just whatever so, <laughs> so that's painted. But I haven't painted that, so that's just raw steel. That'll go rusty just to annoy you guys that have been complaining. I'll do something later. So that says Climo 7, because the, the family that owns the car, their last name is Climo. So that's just a little finishing touch that I wanted to do on there, which was not supposed to be done until near the bitter end. But you know how it goes, the old internet, whinge, whinge, cry, moan, grizzle. So... I can't, I honestly cannot remember what I have done here to increase the um, clearance, but these are the same rotors that were on the front before, not the um, Ford Cosworth, Sierra Cosworth two-wheel drive rotors that I was looking at originally. These are something different. I believe I must have machined the hub here because we've got way more clearance here than what we had before. And I've made new bracket with a welded in spud here so that the thread goes in there and it's it's all nice and tickety-boo takes care of that issue that I mentioned in the previous video of course we're not going to leave it with a giant stack of washers uh, and loose loose bolts that's not going to stay like that so don't comment on that there's also there's lots of bolts missing all over the place see uh, nuts missing all over the place we haven't we're not finished don't be that guy that criticizes things that aren't finished uh, we've got some brake hoses making their way through the vehicle, some fittings happening in here. Uh, that's that's underway. I've got progress happening there. Get back there. So looking good. Brackets have to be, um, there's some bushes that have happened here that it may not have been in the previous video. These are the wrong springs, these are way too soft but that's fine for what we're doing at the moment. Um, these brackets have to come off and be powder coated as do a few other tiny little bits and bobs, just finishing stuff and things. Um, these air filters, they're actually properly bolted on there. They, they weren't earlier on, they were just sat there with two screws. These 
Delortos, I don't know about all Delortos, certainly these ones had two different size screw uh, threads, screw holes I was going to say, two different size threads for the mounting of whatever they had on here before, if anything. So the top ones were, I think in like a eight millimeter size thread, probably Imperial. And the bottoms were like a six millimeter size, but again, it was probably Imperial. So that's jammed in there nicely, isn't it? So that was a bit dumb. So I've sorted that out. I've helicoiled them. I can't remember if it was top ones or bottom ones. No, it's the top ones. Top ones have been helicoiled, so they're all M6 by one now, which is a nice, nice thread to use for something like that. And I've modified these trumpets to fit here. See this bracket here was interfering with where these trumpets would go because these trumpets probably weren't designed or clearly weren't designed to function with these air filters that we've got wanted trumpets because that's more better might make another couple of kilowatts with it and it'll sound better in theory in practice there may not be a lot of difference but that's just something I wanted to do so they've been modified to fit on there and also you'll, you'll see I've taken a little notch out of here to get the screw in there because the screw has to go in at an angle first before you put this onto here so if these screws do come loose they can't actually come out so they'll wind out so far and then they'll hit this and they can't come out because they'll still have thread hanging into here. So everything has to come, the whole thing, both screws on both of these has to come all the way loose for this whole trumpet to come out a long way before the screws will come out and they're Loctited in there as well. You should never, in theory, ever put hardware inside an air filter because there is that risk of things going horribly pear-shaped and the, um, the hardware coming out and going into your motor. We've had that with the March in the past. It's actually a really tight fit. Just squeezes past. Um, plastic distorted. Um, screws came out. Screws went into turbocharger. And bad things happened. Still made quite a lot of boost, but the turbo was um, absolutely stuffed it ruined it significantly um, fortunately the intercooler catches all the debris stops it going into the motor but normally you wouldn't do that in this setup that's just the way it is these filters came with a bunch of uh, nylock nuts which made me think that there's probably studs on those air filters originally and then you put the nylock nuts in there, but then you've got something that's even smaller and even more likely to be able to find its way into the engine and cause uh, significant, if not catastrophic damage. So that's those. They're beautiful. They'll get a little bit of, this is literally just being done today. They'll get a little bit of plastic put over there in the meantime. I've got to put a blank on here It'd be nice if there was just a single fitting on one of these, but there aren't, there isn't. You can probably buy one. I'll put a blank on there. It might be handy to be able to take that off and make sure the fuel's actually getting through at the track. Uh, the hose is basically done. That's plumbed right through to the fuel tank now. That's how it's going to be. Coil and igniter pack was originally living on these two. Look how much dust is developing. On these two mounts here, uh, bolt holes. I think I'll shift it back there just to get it away from the water and crap that comes in through the front here. So we will need a longer lead to take that through to the back. That's easy, no problem at all. Um, over there is a template slash the prototype for the, the hood, the bonnet. I'll put that on in a second. You can ooh and ah. It's only, it's not the finished product. It probably won't stay on the car. That's going to be replicated. I haven't finished my roller that I'm building so everything has to be bump folded so you get a bunch of lines on your corners doesn't look crash hot um, so I want to get that replicated with a proper roll on there originally we were talking about how we're going to make this work with this with the distributor which was about 25 millimeters higher than what it is there which actually fouled with the bonnet so there would have had to have been some sort of bulge or bump or 
a vent over this general area, whether it's asymmetric or goes the whole width and does nothing over there, but makes it all symmetrical and look nice. And um, in the end, I got brave and I chopped up the distributor and shortened it. You can see there's a collar over there that's all pressed back together nice and tight. So the distributor is now, you can't go down any lower than what it is there. It's all timed up properly and it's 25 mils lower profile than what it was before. So now we won't have a bulge in the bonnet and we'll get a nice um, streamlined, tidy and clean looking bonnet. A little bit like that, except as I've said, without being bump folded and without a slight error that I made being corrected with a hammer and dolly to I folded it a little bit early, rolled it, folded it, whatever. It didn't quite line up, so that's been tweaked. So these corners will sit down a little bit nicer. There'll be some foam or some rubber or something like that put under those areas. I've had to do a little bit of a, a derpy derp to take into account this is not the exact shape for this chassis. So it's got a bit of a fold running along here to taper this in so that it'll fit, it, fit the body nicely. So, ice getting there right, with that on there, if we put some wheels on it, we're starting to look like a car again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, traveling to the back, different brake rotors. These are off of BMW. And the reason why I've done that, here's the old ones here, these were on the front. So the offset on these rotors, significantly different. And that caused an issue with with clearance to the back of the wheels because those rotors are quite shallow as far as the offset here goes the height total height of the rotor so this stood out further and then there's not enough dish in the back of the wheel we could have changed the wheels but that's you've got to draw a line somewhere uh, there's not enough dish to fit the caliper in there so i've changed the rotors to something that's nice and easy to get a hold of um, and that takes care of that and then we don't have to have any spaces on the back and then the guards line up properly and the wheels are inside the guards and all that sort of carry on so that's good tomorrow some fittings will turn up and this will be all plumbed up and we'll be able to make the brakes work you won't have seen a finished still some scotch brighting and stuff to get the same finish on everything to go on here but I've finished the back area of the car so there's some eye bolts that go into here for your harnesses going forward a um, couple of push button latches push those pull that forward there you go fill it up with fuel and when you're done it just goes back on there push that down she's done There'd be a little bit of foam will go somewhere, a little bit of rubber or whatever, a bit of silicon on the back of it or something like that to stop it rattling. It's pretty good at the front. Down the sides is not, not terrible. At the back, a little bit more rattly. So you don't want that buzzing and humming and making noises and vibrating when it's two feet away from your head, 600 mils or whatever. So we're nearly there, we're getting there. Um, it is, aside from some wiring and a few bits and pieces, it is not far away from being able to actually start up the motor and put your foot on the clutch and put it in gear and things like that. But there's a lot more to focus on before we worry about doing things like that that won't achieve anything realistic. Ugly face. I have ordered a tachometer. I have not ordered, but I've found a temperature gauge. I will fit a big huge bright red light for an oil pressure warning and that'll do for a dash it's about all it needs you need to know should we do, we'll do an alternator light because you kind of have to have something anyway just to make the alternator work so yeah it'll have an alternator light so that'll be it alternator light oil pressure warning light temperature gauge and tachometer which actually has a shift light <laughs> That'll do, and then I add something, and I add something else. Shift light's pretty handy. Well, I'll, I'll possibly won't use it. We'll see how bright it is. I may use a bigger, brighter 
version just to make it real easy for um, any learner drivers or whatever. Uh, these things rev to 6.4 I think it is from the factory is where the peak power is. So I would imagine Redline's probably 7 grand and that's that. Tachometer goes to 9, 10 or something silly like that. So it's just aftermarket tacos are a little bit harder to buy now than what they used to be. Every aftermarket parts store used to stock them. They don't anymore because most cars that are ever going to need a tachometer in them have them from the factory and then you just don't need to replace them. We all, I never did actually to be honest, but we all did back in the day when we were all boy racers in the 90s and early 2000s and we were putting monster tachos and absolutely everything, which was stupid because you had a tachometer on the dash that worked fine and then you had another huge one sitting right next to that one mounted on top of the dash. As I said, I, I never did it. Right, that'll do. You're updated. Next week there'll be a big push on this. This week was a short week. Uh, so I'll, hopefully we might have a thing that actually moves by itself next week. Now I've said it, I have to do it. Or suffer some sort of internet torture for not achieving that goal. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.